And here's part 16 of Painting a Storm Giant from Nolzers. And I have this flesh wash here that I'm going to use to put the quick wash on the, the brass color. Okay, grab my number one, my trusty number one, number two, number one. Golden Maple. And uh, I'm just gonna go along these parts here to distinguish them a little bit. And uh, yeah, just lately going over. You could do this with the sepia wash as well, but um, the flesh wash has a little bit more of a red tone and um, does nicely for these sorts of application, these, these types of application, type of applications. So yeah. And after the, after the wash, like I was saying in previous videos, the, um, the mini, the base coat is, is really about, it's like as dark in value as I'm going to make it. I'm sure that you could continue to bring it down in value and make it even darker in some of the the deepest valleys and recesses I'm sure you could and it would be great I would I would I would do that myself if this was a competition mini I would probably do that myself um, but I'm not a, as, as you can tell I'm not a competition painter I'm just a guy playing Dungeons and Dragons trying to get these minis on the table most of the time. But, I, you know, that being said, it's hard not to obsess about them a little bit. It's hard not to want them to be cool and impactful and have a have a presence at the at the game table when you bring them out. Okay. So if they're as dark as um, in value as kind of as I'm gonna go, then it means there's really no place to go but but up in terms of um, that. Another great thing about the washes is sometimes, you know, try as you might, uh, during your painting, you just might not get all the way up into the, the nook and cranny of every, of every detail. And for that reason, they say, you know, this is kind of like skill in a pot using a wash or skill in a tube, depending on whose wash you're using. If you're using a Citadel wash, then it's skill in a pot. If you're using like a Vallejo or an army painter wash, Maybe skill in the tube is more correct. I thought I squeezed too much out originally, but now I see 
it was either very much the right amount or not quite enough. Oh. <sighs> like I said, I really do just love the uh, the Army Painters Flesh Wash for for doing these um, gold or brass or bronze washes um they just make them i don't know what it is but it just sort of makes them <clears throat> listen a little bit a little bit i like it a lot Next thing I need to do is come back and reestablish again the top coat um, with that Rhinox hide. <clears throat> so we'll do that. And um, let's see here. Where did it go? I think that's what. Um, what, I, what I'm gonna do with the next step here is, is bring that Rhinox hide back up a little bit. Since it was beaten down pretty severely in the wash, like I said, the wash is kinda, of, after the wash comes along, it's just gonna be about as dark as it's gonna get in value, in terms of its value. So, out of all this sharp and old red as well. Um, I'm just gonna be my highlight color for the Rhinox hide. So, okay. Just get a little water and then dipping right into the pot here. I'm gonna go ahead and put my, put my lid back on for the time being since I'm not gonna be using it to keep this Just kind of brighten up a little bit what the um, what the wash had dulled down on the tops of these straps and on his boots. Okay. And just roll it right along here. Gosh, this is pretty thick paint, I gotta say. It just feels like I'm 
putting it on with a spatula almost. It's so. Uh, but when I tried to water it down, I didn't get the, the results that I was really looking for, you know? So, what are you going to do? What I like about this paint is the way that it creates that dark red leather feel. And, um, and it's got like a certain, I don't know, a, uh, a finish. It's got just a little bit of the, 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 the right kind of a sheen. So that's one of the really important reasons to go back for me afterwards and just kind of brighten it up a little bit. I'm going to do the same for his beard in just a moment as well. My plan is to kind of bring this all up um, just a, one shade lighter at least with the, um, the red. Let's see. The sharp... Where is it? Not the sharp no red. But... The, um, the other fantasy game line red that's just a little bit more. Just a little bit more um, purple. And then I'm going to bring this up a little bit as well. Eventually move into like a verdigris. Okay, that's looking good, I think. All right. So, um, I think I'm going to use a little glacier blue and some ghost gray on his beard. And, um, here it is, oops, ghost gray, or sorry, glacier blue. These are so thick, uh, I'm just going to have to water those down just a touch, just a smidge, because they're, um, they're sort of a stew, chunky stew.
All right, so probably go in here. Um, sorry, I'm just uh, getting a good look at the colors here and yeah, I was just making sure. This is definitely the darker of the two. So I'm gonna really go in now and try to kind of reestablish. Oops, um, use my paint cap here. Okay, yeah, this is so what it's all about here is just coming back in and starting to reestablish some of those lighter colors after a wash. As soon as I find that uh, that other red over here, you know, and I keep I keep grabbing the sharp little red, but that's not it. It's like a uh, it's like a tendril red. And once I once I find that, that'll make it a little easier for me to. bring up some of that um, that Rhinox hide so it's a little lighter So, yeah, this is a number one brush. And uh, when it's this delicate of work, really, I want to switch over to a smaller brush. Like, a, there's a double, a double zero uh, by Windsor & Newton. It's their Series 7 brush uh, for watercolors. And I think, in all, that might be just a little better of a... Touching up his mustache here. Kind of giving him a reverse just for men. a little more but just come in trace some of these top lines a little bit Oop. I 
actually sort of reminds me of one of the um, one of the cast members from uh, Deadliest Catch. Yeah, almost every time I feel like I went a little too far. It's just a little too light. Um, you know, the the one place is definitely kind of like right here. We definitely did get a little too light. I feel like in one splotch. But um, for the most part, I feel like a lot of the, the translucent effects of um, acrylic paints end up working out okay. Making it work. Hmm. Okay, so let's see. This really is working out the way that uh, that I had hoped. That's a little heavy. Gonna keep it going here. I'm just gonna keep highlighting with this lighter color, just trying to go for all the raised areas that I can. All that I can get to and I've kind of learned my lesson here a little bit to, uh, to kind of try it check the consistency before actually putting it onto the mini but yeah this is um, this is quite enjoyable work so I tend to I tend to quiet up a little bit just because I'm so enamored by the process I think it's just for me uh, so much fun to to kind of put on this paint and um, you know, 
I know the, the routines and the procedures, but it still surprises me. Still surprises me how, uh, how it all kind of works out. So nicely. Anyway. That's it for now. I will see you in part 16.